Peter Slezak, can you tell us something about yourself and why you've come here today? Well, look, I, uh, I'm an honorary associate professor in philosophy at the university, but uh, I'm here today because I've been a long-standing supporter of the Palestinian cause as a Jew. My parents were survivors of the Holocaust, both of them. My mother and grandmother survived Auschwitz. And I grew up with their stories, and um, uh, it left me the strong sense, as we all have, of the uh, horrors that they suffered in the concentration camp and the anti-Semitism. But somehow I must have learned a different lesson from everybody else. Certainly the Holocaust is not an excuse to justify what Israel is doing to the Palestinians, which they do, and it's uh, a disgrace. And uh, I mean, if you know the history of Israel, it's been a shocking, um, you know, expropriation of Palestinian land. And it started long before even 1948. The uh, horrible ethnic cleansing was only the kind of culmination of what had been a, you know, the Zionist project since Herzl. They cooked this up in the Balfour Declaration. It was a shocking attempt of, of uh, the Zionists with the uh, connivance of the British uh, government and elites to expropriate the Palestinian land explicitly. They tried to hide it. The uh, Balfour Declaration pretended they were just talking about a Jewish home, but Weizmann himself back then, it's relevant to say, back then he said in private meetings and in writing, it was intended to be a Jewish state. Now, of course, there were people there. It wasn't a land without people, as was the mythology. Enormous amount of mythology and, and deceit over the years to disguise what was then and what continues to be the tragedy of the Palestinian people, especially after 1948. And so um, that was a major catastrophe. Uh, 700 odd thousand people were expelled and lots of murders and 500 odd villages were demolished. Those beautiful old stone, beautifully architectured uh, uh, villages were, were destroyed, over 500. So it's been a tragic story for which the Jews are basically responsible. It's as simple as that. And uh, if you know that, um, I guess you can't avoid the responsibility that any, I mean, you know, the, I said in my speech, the Jews have this phrase uh, during the Second World War, they, they um, admired and uh, made uh, heroes of what they called the, um, the righteous among the nations. These were the Gentiles, the Christians who stood up for them, who protected them against their own, you know, religion or their own people. So. Jews celebrate the righteous among the nations. And my question is, where are the righteous Jews among the nation? Where are the ones, I mean, I know a few, uh, the, the righteous Jews are the ones that are standing here for the Palestinians. And there are a few around the world, there have been quite a lot. I mean, in America, there have been rallies, Jews saying, not in our name. And uh, that's not to overlook the crimes of the Palestinians, especially now in Gaza, there was an atrocity. And I had to say in my speech, one can't ignore that and uh, I was pleased that the audience I'm telling them now that their side has not been entirely virtuous and they responded very well um, I appreciate that and um, we have to stand up it's shocking I mean you know the, the Israeli government in the past I mean I mean the whole occupation but but the the uh, Gaza blockade is a crime in international law it has been now for 16 years where's the world not a word and um, now they're actually openly bragging about committing uh, crimes against uh, international law. Against the, they've now shut off all the electricity and the water. I mean, it was bad enough before this. So you'll have Galland or whatever his name is, the uh, Israeli minister. He's bragging about, uh, and you should see their rhetoric, this unhinged um, uh, savagery against the Palestinians. I mean, we're talking, you know, in Gaza, nearly half the population are kids. One point some million of two and a half million are children. So this is a kind of uh, savagery which is disgraceful and, and sickening and, and, and it's very hard to deal with it. The sad thing is that I don't think the Jewish community fully understands this. And so that's my job, I guess, for those of us Jews who are here, we're trying hard to push back. And uh, it's not easy. The Jews are, uh, as you can understand, it's a bit like September 11 in America. After that, they were so, uh, you know, crazy with, with both grief and outrage that they went and bombed the crap out of Afghanistan, which didn't, wasn't responsible for it. But, you know, Muslims were in danger in the streets. That sort of overreaction. I think the Jewish community now is also livid, uh, unjustifiably, in the sense that we have to deal with the atrocities that the Palestinians did in an appropriate way. And it's not as though it didn't come out of anywhere. It's not like it was 
unprovoked. They want to say it was unprovoked. But look at the history of Gaza. What do you mean unprovoked? So it's not to excuse it. I have to keep making the point to understand it, like with September 11. To explain it and understand its causes is not to justify it. I have to say that because we're certainly not doing that. On the contrary, we have to understand where it came from. And it, and it was like September 11. It was blowback. It was, was, was uh, how long can you keep people in such dire uh, conditions and, not, and what, you expect them to passively put up for another 15 years? Of course, it was predictable and, uh, and, and shocking, but uh, I use the expression, it's not a jailbreak because people in jail are guilty of something, but this is a, a break from a concentration camp. They're not guilty of anything. And, and inevitably, people will resort to certain ways that we may not be happy with, but I mean, let me put it bluntly, where to blame? That's a bit harsh, but I think it's correct. Um, I think that's pretty much clearly the case. I mean, we, meaning our governments, our media, and the Jews. I'm sorry to say it so bluntly, but I don't think uh, there's any other way to read the history of it and, and, and the recent history. Who can fix this then? That's what? Who can fix it? Oh, we can. Well, we're the only ones who can fix it. I mean, the Western governments in particular, um, uh, the Jews, I mean, look, uh, it's up to us to to uh, obey international law and human rights. What else? That's all it takes. You know, it's not complicated. People say, oh, it's complicated. No, it's not complicated. If someone's in violation of international law, so it's not like I'm asking for a lot or we on the Palestinian side are making extravagant or unrealizable demands. Yeah. Just obey international law means end the, the, the blockade on Gaza, end the, the suffering. And, 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 and that's not to mention the West Bank, which is they're shooting kids dead. On average, it was until now, it's even more in the last period, on average two kids a week are shot dead. House demolition, 50,000 houses demolished. The water is being stolen. You know, this is what, what Zionism is all about. So the Jews have a big responsibility here, and, but they're being obey, aided and abetted by the, uh, of course, America mainly, and our own governments, and the media. So it's not very complicated to see. It's, and something may change. I mean, we didn't expect South African apartheid to win. Um, and of course, the word apartheid has now been used by three of the major human rights organizations. So why are we putting up with it? Why is the world tolerating it? That's the question. Thank you very much, Peter. Are you with that group, uh, Jews Against the Occupation? Well, no, I set up a, a different group many years ago called Independent Australian Jewish Voices. Okay. That's kind of lapsed in various ways. But, but uh, there are those of us around that are... I mean, that was actually had a big impact at the time because we, um, we had a letter in the newspaper which, and a lot of signatories. So at the time, it was a good moment when we, we, we it was during one of these crises and uh, we got a lot of attention. So, so that was good. Was that in 2014? Uh, no, it was earlier. It was about 2007, I think. Right. And, um, uh, and we had a lot of Jewish signatories yeah. because they felt the same way. So, so anyway, that's the history of it.